Is it for your piety that he rebukes you and brings charges against you? Is not your wickedness great? Are not your sins endless? You demanded security from your brothers for no reason. You stripped men of their clothing, leaving them naked. You gave no water to the weary, and you withheld food from the hungry, though you were a powerful man owning land, an honored man living on it. And you sent widows away empty-handed and broke the strength of the fatherless. That is why snares are all around you, why sudden peril terrifies you, why it is so dark you cannot see, and why a flood of water covers you. Is not God in the heights of heaven, and see how lofty are the highest stars? Yet you say, what does God know? Does he judge through such darkness? Thick clouds veil him, so he does not see us as he goes about in the vaulted heavens. Will you keep to the old path that evil men have trod? They were carried off before their time, their foundations washed away by a flood. They said to God, leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet it was He who filled their houses with good things. So I stand aloof from the counsel of the wicked. The righteous see their ruin and rejoice. The innocent mock them, saying, Surely our foes are destroyed, and fire devours their wealth. Submit to God and be at peace with Him. In this way prosperity will come to you. Accept instruction from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove wickedness far from your tent, and assign your nuggets to the dust, your gold of Ophir to the rocks and the ravines, then the Almighty will be your gold, the choicest silver for you. Surely then you will find the light in the Almighty, and will lift up your face to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you. world, how to judge your fellow brother, how not to gossip, how not to slander. He taught you all these things, yet you do the opposite. He taught you all these things, but yet you keep going against him. Didn't you learn from our forefathers, from our ancestors? from the ones who sinned before us that we should learn lessons from them from Samson from David from King Solomon to not get involved with the women to not make sins with women Samson did it King David did it and King Solomon did it and you know who really suffered the most out of the three of them King David because when he was with Bathsheba Hashem killed that baby so a lot of people don't know that yeah, his second child the one that survived was King Solomon from Bathsheba but the first baby they had died if I'm not mistaken after seven days why? because that baby came from an unholy union so Hashem had to punish King David to clean the sin so many y'all man I'm gonna tell you wow 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 bro bro the king of Moab Misha how they were getting defeated by the Jews by the Israelites by my nation and the king of Moab sacrificed his only son to God right away look at the next verses and the Moabites gained the upper hand you understand what's going on Hashem was so impressed that this Goy 
wanted to be like Avram Avinu. That's what he said to himself. He said, Avram Avinu did it or was about to do it. And look at how God blessed him. I'm going to do it. And he did it. And God protected him from the Israelites. Bro, it was like gangster. Look at some of the other stories with Elisha. Yo, Elisha did a lot of... Yo. So he revived the dead son of the Shulamite woman. He killed the 42 youths where two bears came out after he sent a curse on them from heaven. What else did he do? Oh, he got the axe that the guy dropped the axe that was borrowed into a piece of stick. Then the water raised up. The soup that everybody was eating was contaminated with some weed. And he said, get some flour, put some flour in there. The whole pot became good. Um, when they captured, I, um, I want to say the Moabites, the steam, I'm not remember exactly sure in this one, but go check. When he captured them, the king was like, what should we do with them? Oh, that's it. He made a prayer and Hashem made them blind. So they walked into Samaria and they were captured. So the king said to Elisha, what should I do with them? So you know what he told him? Feed them. Feed them. Give them food. Give them drink. Feed them and send them back. And, and they were from Aram. That's what it was. So they used to come and like do these things where they would come in and steal or rob or you know like every so often. And after that incident, they send them back home. Fed and sated. They never attacked again. Um, oh, I liked with uh, Nehemiah, his name was, he had the leprosy, and he came to Elisha, yo, so Elisha didn't come out to meet him, he went nuts, he doesn't come out to greet me, he's not going to bless me in the name of God and wave his hand over the leprosy, he was ready to get back in his chariot and go, so his servant said to him, my master, my king, if Elisha would have told you to do the hardest thing, would you not have done it? Here, he's telling you, just dip yourself in the Jordan seven times and you're good. Why would you not do it? So he said, you know what, you're right. And he did it and he got cured. And that's when Gehazi went and chased after him to get some talents of silver and some change of clothes. And Alicia was gangster because he came back and he goes, where were you, Gehazi? And he said, I didn't go anywhere. He said, don't you know that I can see what happened? How you chased after Nehemiah and you begged him for some talons of silver and you lied to him and said that we had two prophets coming. What do you think? I don't see that. So he told Gehazi, now the leprosy that was his is now yours. And that's what it says. The next verse says it was white as snow from the leprosy. Alicia did some really amazing things. Yo, Hashem did some crazy miracles for Elisha, yo. I like Elisha, yo. They called him Baldy. Baldy. <laughs> yo, it says right in the book that he said a prayer to God and all of a sudden two bears appeared out of nowhere and killed 42 of them. They were mad. You know why? That's another miracle he did. He cured the water. The water was all bad. They were dying. Forgot what he put in the water. Salt. He put some salt in the water. Look how Hashem gives that to me. This is stuff I just studied on Shabbat, bro. And it's crazy because it's just, that's it. Once it enters my mind, yo, it just sticks there. It doesn't go anywhere, bro. Thank God, man. Hashem puts it there. And then when I do the videos, it just pops up. So we fixed the water and they got mad because they were making money off of it. Some of the thugs over there. So I guess their children came to like yell at him for fixing the water. And they started making fun of him. He said a prayer. 42 of them got killed by these two bears. Alicia was dope, yo. He did a lot of things that were like, yo. I'll tell you another amazing thing that Alicia did. Well, not even amazing that he did it, but just to teach us a beautiful lesson. You see, in order for God to speak to you, you have to be in a state of total tranquility and peace. If you're frustrated, he will not come to you. If you're mad, he will not come to you. He might come to you and then punish you. Like he did to Elijah. Because yeah? Elijah was upset and everything he said was a million percent right. And he spoke bad about the nation of Israel. Yo, Moshe Rabbeinu 
said that the Jews are not going to listen to you. Yo, you got punished for that. That's why the staff turned into a snake right away and jumped back. Why did he jump back? Because he realized he got punished. And why did the staff turn into a snake? Because just like the snake spoke bad about God, he spoke bad about his children, bro. It's deeper than you could ever get. You understand? This is Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, I could say the same thing right now. Hashem, the Jews are off the derech. There's no way they're coming back. And it's probably true. That's the crazy part, yo. Like, that's it. It went too far. Too much, too much. When you see half of our nation with gay pride flags, yo, jumping and screaming that they don't want a God in their lives. They don't want a religious state. They want a democracy. They fucking out of here with this garbage. I told my boy Mickey today, bro. No God, no wisdom. That's why you see what you see today. That's why kids today rob a bank and videotape it. You understand? There's no wisdom because there's no God. You want to take God and you want to get rid of him? I already told you in my past video that he will remind you exactly who he is. Go look at the rainbow if you want to know who God is. When you see a gorgeous rainbow like that, you're not even allowed to stare at it. You say a bracha commemorating that he made a pact to never destroy the world again with a flood. And you quickly turn away. You cannot take joy in something that brings Hashem pain. I think the, the one thing you don't even realize is not only is Hashem sad about the people that he already killed. The rainbow now in your town is for you to die. You should have died, bro. But he saved you. So he's sad that you're so off the derrick that he almost had to kill you. So when God is crying, you're going to be smiling, taking pictures. If you're clever, don't stare at the rainbow. Now look what they do, yo, gay pride. What are you taking pride in? I'm not on the, Like, it doesn't make sense, bro. Gay pride. So you're taking pride in the fact that you're going against God and committing an abomination? That's what you're taking pride in? How dumb can you be to call it gay pride? If you are gay, be ashamed. Be embarrassed, yo. Feel contrite after you make that disgusting sin, yo. Don't sit there and take pride in the sin. I don't know another sin where they say pride. An anger pride, adultery pride, and gossip pride, not eating kosher pride, premarital sex pride. I mean, you don't hear this attached to any other sin than being gay. If that doesn't show you how the devil tricked us, and nothing will. Nothing will, yo. He managed to make the world accept that. And that's what we said. No God, no wisdom. You're going to remove God. Then who's going to be in charge? The Satan. And right away, the Satan is going to tell you, be transgender, go be gay. The Satan is so gangster because he makes it seem like it's all like this one girl today. I'm not telling you to go have premarital sex. However, you better have sex so you know how the sex is going to be when you get married. Man, that is the devil one billion percent. They come like they're so righteous. I'm not saying that premarital sex. So great. So stop there. No. However, you need to have relations. I shouldn't even say sex. Yo. Forgive me, Uncle bro. Really, if you listen to my past talks, I don't even say that. But I always say relations. So let me rephrase that to show you that you should speak in a classy way, just like God does in the Torah. And there's times in the Torah where Hashem gets real, real tough. You will eat the flesh of your flesh, bro. What, what else you want? What else you want? The famine is going to be so bad that you're going to cut off your own arm and eat it. Yo, God forbid, yo. And what do famines come from? And starvation. What does it come from? Why does the heaven and earth close up? Why? Because the heaven and earth were put here to serve you. So when you serve God, they'll serve you. But when you stop serving God, the heaven and earth will stop serving you. And that's when the famine comes. That's when the rain stops. That's when the crops do not grow. And that's when the suffering begins. And you would think in the middle of a famine that the people would change, fix it. They don't. There was one situation where Hashem came to them in the middle of the plague. Change now and I'll take you back. Why you need this drama? And they still didn't change. Look at the sons of Eli the prophet. How they 
they committed the horrible sins. And Hashem punished Eli. Why? Because he didn't stop them. He didn't say anything, yo. He should have said something. You understand? It's deep. And how Shaul went, man, called Samuel from the dead. He said, why would you call me when you're cursed by God? So Shaul wanted to do tshuva. So Samuel told him, go to battle and die. And you'll come be with me tomorrow. And that's exactly what happened. He went out to battle, he died, and went to heaven. But why did he have to get stabbed and die? You know why? Because he tried to kill Jonathan with his spear. He tried to kill King David with his spear. So he got killed with his own spear. He fell on it to commit suicide. And he didn't die, so one of the Amalekites walked by and he told him, finish me off, and he did. And then I can't even say how he went back to King David to tell King David, I killed King Shaul, like thinking he's gonna be happy. King David killed him. You're gonna kill the anointed one and think you're gonna get away with it? You're not, seize him and kill him. And they killed him, yo, deep. There was another thing about Elisha that I wanted to say that I was thinking about when I was saying something earlier, yo. Ah, it escaped me right now, but I'll get it back. Oh, with the grain. How there was a famine in the land. And he announced that tomorrow that the wheat is going to be super cheap. There's going to be food everywhere. So one of the king's men that was actually holding up the king... He said, even if God were to open up the heavens and earth, that wouldn't happen. What are you trying? It's not going to happen. He said, not only will it happen, it's going to happen and you're going to see it. But you will not partake in any of the food. And he ended up getting trampled and he died, yo. And he did see how the barley was super cheap and how everything changed overnight. Because another miracle Hashem did, he makes these like chariots, fire. They think they're being attacked. There was another time where he told them to dig trenches, put water in the hole. They looked, they saw water. Hashem made it look red. They thought it was the blood of the Jews that they killed each other, fighting against each other. They came to attack. They got ambushed. Hashem does like, yo, man, how many times Hashem stepped up and went to war for us, yo. What an amazing father, bro. What an amazing father, bro. Cannot get a better father. Cannot, cannot, man. He doesn't even want to punish you. Most fathers today want to punish you. They get revenge. How can you do it? Nah, not God, bro. He's not trying to get revenge. He punishes you because he has to. Let me say that again. He punishes you because he has to. You know why? Because if he doesn't punish you, how are you going to clean your sins? You're not. You're going to have to go to hell. And he doesn't want you there. So he punishes you in this world to erase your sins. So you don't have to go to hell. And I got some better news than that. You don't even need to get punished in this world. You do a sin, say sorry. Right away, say sorry, bro. If you're a real lover of God, right away after you do any sin, you're going to feel bad, bro. The other day I got frustrated, bro. I felt bad. I had to apologize to God. I'm sorry for getting frustrated. I'm sorry for not trusting you 1 billion percent. And I do, bro. Listen to my videos, bro. I cry about how much I love God. So how can it be? How? Because I'm not an angel. How Moshe Rabbeinu got frustrated. I also got frustrated. It's part of human life. It happens. The goal is to remind yourself to put your ego low. Let it go and know. That God is wanting the show, bro. And I came up with that through the grace of God. And even I fall to frustration sometimes. Because you see injustice. That's what I love what I read recently. When you see injustice and it bothers you, that's the sign you're a righteous person. Nobody told you to go yell and scream and take sue people and report people. Nah, you want to report somebody? Report him to God. Yo, I'll never forget there was this guy on the board. Man, if you're a Jew and you're on a board, yo, jump off the board. What can I tell you? Take a running start and catapult yourself off of that board. 
So I'll never forget there was this Jewish guy on the board on Shabbat taking a picture of another Jew smoking a cigar where he wasn't allowed to smoke. So I remember I looked at the guy and I'm like, what are you doing? And then he goes to me, I'm on the violations committee and he's committing a violation. So I looked at him, I said, you know what's so ironic? So he goes, what? I said that you're on the violation board and you're committing a violation now against God, breaking Shabbat with your phone. Don't you see the irony? <laughs> he didn't think it was too funny. I thought it was sad, but I had to laugh, yo. He's on the violations committee violating Shabbat, trying to get another Jew in trouble that was smoking a cigar. Do you understand the times that we're living in right now, bro? It's not good, bro. It's not good. Hashem knows it. And you know what? His children have the potential. How many Jews did I meet that don't keep Shabbat that are nice people? A lot, yo. A lot. So please don't sit here and tell me that 90% of the Jews break Shabbat and they're, they're, they're done. That's not, no, no, no. I do not accept that, yo. Yes, a lot of them break Shabbat, and if they don't change, they will be done. Yes, there will be a time of trouble for Jacob. They're going to have to suffer a lot to get cleansed. No doubt about it, bro. But to say that they don't have the potential to be great is a lie. The potential a Jew has is unlimited, Joe. Unlimited potential. Intelligent, smart, clever. Use those things to get closer to God and you'll be good to go, bro. Don't use those things for sins, to make money, to trick women. Don't, nah, don't do all that because that's only going to bring you bad energy. Always remember the fastest way to peace is through the Word of God. It's the only way to peace. You want to get high? Go get high. You have peace for six hours. Now when you're not high, you're gonna get stressed where you're gonna get your next high from. <laughs> or you buy, you know, smoke weed. So fine, you smoke an ounce, good, no problem. Now you dope, everything's high, yeah, you chill, peace. Now that ounce is gone, you gotta buy another ounce. You gotta find the guy, spend money. There's no peace in that, it's all fake. If you want real peace, you can only get it through the word of God. Trust me, bro. I lived a completely secular lifestyle. There's nothing in it. It's empty. It's Reka, bro. I promise you it's Reka. A million times Reka. No happiness. Everything is a facade. Everything is a fantasy. Everything is fake, fraud. Everything's a mirage. You understand what I'm telling you? Just the way I said it right there, you should have got the point a billion times. Deeply embedded like a nail in wood that cannot be expunged. Yo, listen to what I'm telling you, bro want peace in your life and happiness get it through the word of God read his books read his prophets books read the words of the Torah read Deuteronomy read Hazinu just Hazinu you already get a beautiful taste of what God's about the better you are the more blessings he'll give the worse you are the more punishments you get it's not a hard equation. It's not some magical secret, you know, formula. It's pretty simple. Be good. Follow his laws. Follow his laws. Fix your flaws. What else do you need? Follow the laws. Fix the flaws. That's it. Simple. It's hard. But the concept is simple. How badly do you want it, yo? How badly do you want to be? Oh, I heard Muhammad Ali say something the other day that was so dope. A little kid asked him, who's was like 30 years old, what do you plan on doing for the next 30 years? So Muhammad Ali told him, you know, I'm going to probably sleep nine of those years. I travel, that's another four years. I watch TV all the time, that's another three years. He goes, if you really think about it, even if I live to 65, I probably have another 16 years left. So the kid goes, what are you going to do in those 16 years? I said, Muhammad Ali, may God bless him right now as I speak, yo. His answer was like this. I'm going to prepare myself 
that's a big card that's deep meaning I'm gonna work on my growth meaning I'm gonna try to be a better father meaning I'm gonna be more respectful meaning I'm not gonna go you know maybe embarrass people in, in press conferences you know maybe I'll apologize if I heard Joe Frazier <laughs> You know, if I hurt his feelings, if I said something about his, I don't know, something about him that embarrassed him or hurt him. Yo, Muhammad Ali, bro, could very well be in heaven, yo. Very well. And he suffered a lot with, like, brain damage. So, yeah, I'll probably say he's in heaven. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why would he not be in heaven? When you say I'm spending the last 60 years of my life or the rest of my life, what do you plan to do with the rest of your life? Prepare myself to meet God. Yo, I like that, yo. I like that a lot, yo. So, Elisha, what happened with Elisha? He got mad at one of the kings. So, what did he say? Bring me a harp. Why? Because there is no way he could have a prophecy while he was mad. So, he needed some music, calm down, and then he was able to prophesy. Do you understand? Tia Benoah wrote such an important lesson. That's why it says the Torah's message is humbleness. You know how you get to be humble? By keeping your mouth closed. By minding your business when you need to mind it. By not going above and beyond to try to get things done. Do it more in a way where you pull back and let God handle it. What did God tell us in the Torah? I will fight your battles. You just sit back and chill. And when he meant by sit back and chill, he meant pick up a book on the Torah and read it. And I'll go to war for you. He's the most amazing, yo. <laughs> you look at a lion, how majestic he is. Right? You look at a jaguar, how beautiful she is. And you're so impressed with that. Now just imagine the one who made that. Your beauty is unmatched, I this Your wisdom is untouched. And your midot are perfect. May we all have the merit to be half of a half of a half of a half as great as you. Couldn't even say it like that because he's that great. But you know what? We can emulate him. We can strive to be like him. Yeah, ask yourself, what would God do? Would he go on Facebook and write a post about somebody he doesn't like, dissing him and his family? Never. Will he gossip? Will he complain? Will he sue? Will he get mad? Will he kick? Will he spit? Nah, not so much do any of those things. And neither would he if he's in love with God. I just want to say I love you so much, Akadosh Baruch I appreciate you so much. Help me with that thing I need help with if you can. Even though it's small, I still call on you. Because I know you're the master of it all. The master of noise. The master of everything that happens in this world is in your hand. I know it. And all I'm doing is letting you know. Love him. Cherish him, respect him, and know for who you're standing. May God open up the heavens and release the rain at its proper time. May God make it that the crops grow. May God make it that the food and the wine are sweet. May God make it that every Jew that's alive lives forever. Amen. Let me say that again. Please make it a Kaddish Baruch that every Jew we know says this prayer. And if they don't, may me saying it now cover them for when they're supposed to say it and they don't. The prayer of Asher Yatzar. If you get out of the bathroom, you wash your hands. Not that one, two, three quick. Hit the cup the right way and you say this prayer blessed are you Lord our God King of the universe
universe, who formed man in wisdom and created within him numerous orifices and cavities. It is known before the throne of pure glory that one of them will be opened or one of them will be blocked. It would be impossible to exist even for a short while. Blessed is you, Lord our God, who heals all flesh and performs wonders. Amen. I love you. Now when I say that, take out the amen, but I always end it with I love you. Because I do. You save my soul, the cover spell. That's not that's more than saving my life. That's saving my soul. You gave me your word. And you saw that I was addicted to it. So you kept feeding me. And feeding me and feeding me. And then sticking all that knowledge in my brain and leaving it there. And at any moment I can access it. And that's super dope. Continue to bless me a cousin Sparhu. And don't think I don't know. The Torah study will get greater. You're going to look better. It's going to probably be the best thing for your soul ever. What is it? To move to Israel. Say that if you die in Israel, all your sins get erased. Because the land atones for the sin. Interesting. Move to Israel though. In the end... You'll never regret that, yo. Love you, Hashem. In ways that I want the world to see and understand. It's a palpable love. It's a love that can be felt. It's a love. Saying, I love you. Love you, Hashem. After Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. So he sent messengers saying to them, Go and consult Baal Zebub, the god of Akron, to see if I will recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going off to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Akron? Therefore this is what the Lord says, You will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So Elijah went. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you come back? A man came to meet us, they replied, and he said to us, Go back to the king who sent you and tell him, This is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending men to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Akron? Therefore you will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. The king asked them, What kind of man was it who came to meet you and told you this? They replied, He was a man with a garment of hair and with a leather belt around his waist. The king said, That was Elijah the Tishbite. Then he sent to Elijah a captain with his company of fifty men. The captain went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill, and said to him, Man of God, the king says, Come down. Elijah answered the captain, If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. At this the king sent to Elijah another captain with his fifty men. The captain said to him, Man of God, this is what the king says, come down at once. If I am a man of God, Elijah replied, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. Then the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men. So the king sent a third captain with his fifty men. This third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life and the lives of these fifty men, your servants. See, fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men, but now have respect for my life. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went down with him to the king. He told the king, This is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no God in Israel for you to consult that you have sent messengers to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Akron? 
because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So he died according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken.